I am single and I am looking for a girlfriend. I want a girl who can go to the movies with me, hold hands with me, have sex with me. I am <laughs> Wake up, Mr. West, Mr. West, Mr. Fresh, Mr. By himself, he's so impressed. I mean, damn, did you even see the test? You got these, motherfucker, these. Rosie Perez, good morning. Since I am officially a legal citizen, I guess it's time to hop back onto this YouTube thing, huh? What's up? <laughs> That's right, I went through 12 years of public schooling to become an anime YouTuber. Mother, I apologize. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the internet's favorite show, Weeb Review, hosted by the internet's favorite personality, Kiki Ya'ai. And today we have a bit of a special one for you, so let's just jump right into it. No, guys, what, what, when I snap, it's supposed to, you know, go to the, go to the thing. God damn it. When to girlfriend is either the best or worst thing you will ever encounter. At least that's what Twitter told me. Honestly, the amount of internet discourse I've seen about a show called Winter Girlfriend is kinda funny. It's a very polarizing series in considering the contents of what actually happens in the show, and the manga being about a hundred chapters too long, I can see why opinions on it are so varied and extreme. Now before I begin my breakdown, please remember that this video is only about the first season of the anime, and not about the manga. That is a whole other can of worms that I am not touching. And there's going to be a fair bit of personal interpretations of the characters and their actions, so please remember that this is all just personal opinion. My opinion doesn't hold any more weight than any of yours. So with that in mind, let's briefly talk about the staff. The studio that worked on this glorious car crash of entertainment is TMS Entertainment. You might know them from shows like Dr. Stone and We Life, but the most important one to me is the remake of Fruits Baskets. Considering this is a romance show and the romantic scenes were great in that show, maybe it translates over. Moving on to the director, which is Kozumi Koga. The only other directing awards he's gotten were for short anime like Doki Chan or Wayne Coco. So Once a Girlfriend is about the only thing he's really done as a full-time director so far. Besides that, he's done some episode directing for shows like Wii Zero, Steins Gates, and a few other popular anime. Finally, the original creator is Weiji Miyajima. Some may call him Weiji, some may call him Miyajima, but I refer to him as a king. It feels like people already didn't really like him for dragging this degenerate shit out for 26 freaking volumes, but it seems like ever since the NTR scene in the manga, the hate for this man has absolutely peaked. All I'm gonna say about that is, y'all surprised Kazuya got a bono from that? I mean, not even the fact that he's already beat it to that exact same scenario happening to Mami, but it perfectly fits his character. Whoa, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. The plot of Rent a Girlfriend is a pretty sad and relatable tale if I'm being honest. Kazuya Kinoshita has just got dumped by his very first girlfriend and is pretty down in the dumps about it. It might have only been for one month, but he gave the relationship his all. And to just get discarded and replaced with another guy so suddenly like that would make any guy sad. Seeking to soothe his pain, he finds out about this brilliant app called Rent a Girlfriend. Pretty self-explanatory about what the purpose of the app is. He books a date with one of the most popular girls on the site. She is a Rumizuhara, and the date goes pretty well, but after reading some reviews by the other customers, Kazuya believes it's all just an act to get money out of men. I mean, yeah. That's what the job entails. It's not a weird date. Obviously, she's gonna do the same thing she did with you with the other customers. What did you expect? Despite feeling slighted, he still books a second date with her, but it's not going as well. To make it even worse, Kazuya gets a worrying text that his grandmother is in the hospital. Well, that took a turn. Due to them still being on the date, though, Chizuru has to accompany him to the hospital. His grandma turns out to be fine, 
But the real conflict begins when we find out Kazuya's grandma is really close with Shizuo's grandma. Due to Kazuya not wanting to look pathetic in front of his family, and Shizuo not wanting her grandma to know about her profession, they both lie and say that they are an actual real-life couple. As they keep their act up, they slowly begin to realize that they may actually have feelings for each other. What I find funny about this plot is that it's nowhere near the weirdest I've covered. To be frank, besides the whole renting a girlfriend thing, it progresses in the way you'd expect. The entire concept is pretty ludicrous, but that isn't exactly new in this genre. I do have a few issues, but since this is a character drama, I'll bring them up when I talk about them. But I thought this plot was well done for what it is. It's obviously not taking itself super seriously. Let's be honest, you want to hear me talk about Kazuya. You probably want me to berate this 20 world loser for not being an alpha Chad. God forbid if the degenerate character makes y'all cringe, am I right? Gotta make fun of Kazuya to make sure you're part of the alpha squad. But let's really be honest here. Is Kazuya really all that bad? Maybe in the manga it's different, but in this first season, I didn't find him all that terrible. I actually related to Kazuya in a lot more ways than I like to admit, and I'm sure a lot of the people that aren't even critiquing his character just straight up hating him are the same way. All Kazuya really is is an exaggerated version of a typical lonely, sex-addicted young adult male. The main problem I have with Kazuya is, minus a few isolated moments, he doesn't grow from that pathetic state. There are times he's been brave, like with Sumi or the time he literally saved Shizuru's life. It shows me that beneath the horniness and self-hatred, there's a brave kid willing to do anything for someone important to him. But 9 times out of 10, it feels like he just lets himself get stepped on. He doesn't stick up for himself, and again, I understand what that's like, but that doesn't make it not aggravating to watch. Not to mention, sometimes his mindset on things is just dumb. Like the fact he got mad at Shizuru for faking the date? It makes the scenes where Shizuru is just laying in on him so much more satisfying. Matter of fact, you know that clip I played at the beginning? Beginning. Have sex with me. I... <laughs> That's essentially Kazuya's character in a nutshell. You can't expect to get a girlfriend if you present yourself like a creepy dork. Probably the worst episode in the entire series for me is episode 8, because it perfectly encapsulates the worst traits about Kazuya's character. He rejected Ruka to stalk Chizuru and what he assumed to be her boyfriend while he imagines himself getting cut for about 15 minutes. And then he gets no real repercussion for literally stalking somebody. It's like it never happens. I'm not looking down on this character as a way to make myself feel better, especially since he isn't even a bad guy. Episode 10 proved that at the very least he cares about his friend's well-being and was willing to expose his relationship with Chizuru in order to make him feel better. He just has terrible self-esteem and it's just kind of pathetic if I'm being honest. I'm hoping since he's self-aware of how much of a loser he is that he grows to be less of a loser. He's already shown signs of growth and I like that it's a little inconsistent and sometimes he reverts back to his old self, even if his old self is really annoying, because that's how a person really changes after all. He just needs that push to fully change, and if it's true that being around Shizuru makes him a better person, then hopefully by next season we see more changes. Am I being too optimistic? Maybe. But you know what? At least Kazuya has a personality. At least Kazuya has something that makes him somewhat of a unique character. You know how many of these lame, cookie cutter, bland, forget them right after watching the show protagonists are in these kind of shows? Where they're just perfect from day one and fix all the girls problems. Is that really more entertaining than watching a relatable but slightly exaggerated character try to grow? Okay, maybe not slightly exaggerated, but you get my point. I said the same thing with Nagatoro's protagonist. I feel like y'all just like Chad MCs too much. Kazuya does have his fair share of problems and I'll admit it's annoying to watch at times, but I'm willing to give him a chance since the show's literally shown us that he is trying to change. 
Shizuru, as previously stated, is Kazuya's crush and kind of fake girlfriend. She's the complete opposite of Kazuya. She's pretty, intelligent, and cheerful, but she also has a short-tempered side. Out of all the characters in the show, she's probably the most layered personality-wise. Some may misinterpret her character as being greedy because she sticks around with Kazuya as his rented girlfriend throughout the entirety of the series, getting paid for each and every visit. But she's mentioned before that she doesn't get paid all that well from her job and only does it to practice being an actress. She sticks around because she just wants to help Kazuya find a real girlfriend, to not only eventually show to his grandma, but also because I feel like she genuinely cares about him. I mean, the first thing she worried about when Ruka confessed was whether she truly loved him or not. She clearly feels a kind of way about him, especially after the talk with Kibe and the incidents on the ferry. It seems like Chizuru is in doubts about whether or not she truly likes Kazuya or not, and that's left her in a bit of a confusing state. But she's not really sure how to break off the whole rented girlfriend relationship thing because it's kind of a complicated situation. It's unrealistic, which can be a critique, but it seems she sees the good in Kazuya like Kibe does. And it's expressed in the overpass scene. So, let's talk about Ruka now. Ruka is first introduced as another Wento girl going out with Kazuya's friend, but due to circumstances, she falls head over heels for Kazuya and becomes super clingy towards him. She sees Shizuru as a rival and essentially blackmails Kazuya into dating her, but sadly, Kazuya doesn't really see her as a romantic partner and would rather date Shizuru. So let's talk about how this love triangle actually came to be, huh? So Ruka has a condition that affects her heart. Basically, Basically, no matter what happens, she doesn't feel excitement. Her heart never bumps faster than normal. It makes her feel like some kind of robot who can't feel emotions. She even became a winter girlfriend and went on so many dates, but none of them made her feel anything. But when Kazuya came along and protected her from tripping down the stairs, that was the first time her heart raced. There's a reason she's so emotionally attached to Kazuya. It was not only the first time she felt love, it was the first time she felt excited over anything. The sad part is... He doesn't feel the same way. His heart is already for Chizuru at this point. Now, I have no idea why they decided to shove her backstory, which is essential to her character, in the ending of an episode. I mean, I get she's not the main girl and all, but I would have liked to seen this backstory actually play out and feel important. I just feel bad for her, you know? She finally found someone she loves, but he loves somebody else, and no matter how much he tries to force it, it just doesn't work out because Kazuya has no emotional connection to her. At least she loves by the end of the season that she can't just force it anymore and will try to get Kazuya to love her naturally, but sadly she's probably gonna get cucked. Oh god, what if they animate scenes of her getting cucked next? There's not a whole lot to say about Sumi, other than I do think she's adorable. She got introduced in episode 11 as Chizuru's kind of sort of Wento girlfriend student. Chizuru teaches Sumi about how to be a Wento girlfriend, but it seems like her overwhelming social anxiety just doesn't work with this kind of profession. She kind of reminds me of Komi-san, where she just doesn't talk much and mostly just grunts. Like I said, there's not a whole lot here, so let's get to the second character you've probably been waiting for me to talk about. Is it bad that I kind of enjoyed Mommy towards the end? Don't get me wrong, Mommy as a person is a two-faced manipulative bitter ex-girlfriend who's purposely trying to make her ex that she dumped unhappy for no reason other than because she's a certified hater. Her only purpose is to further the plot along by bringing along some conflict. But as a character? Mommy is kind of great. Just her presence alone makes the show so much more entertaining. Just because you know she's going to bring some kind of drama. She's the living personification of those I wake up real early to be a hater memes. Is it personification if she's not real? Eh, whatever. But I feel like there's a lot more than what meets the eye with Mommy. And honestly, to give Reiji credit, it's subtly thrown in there. Like when her brother says, <laughs> It kinda gives me a vibe that her story is a lot more darker than the other girls. It seems to me that she's routinely having boyfriends for some kind of reason, and that reason is probably why she has such a cold feeling towards love. Either way, just her presence makes the show a lot better for me, and it took until the end of the show to make me realize it. When it comes to the characters in this show, I didn't hate them. 
At least I didn't hate the main cast. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the dorks whose only personality trait is that they're a bunch of virgins, bro. Massive non-sex havers, dude. Except Kibe. I quite enjoyed him. Not a huge fan of the grandma character either. It's not really her fault because Kazuya is actively lying to her about Chizuru, but the fact she's so desperate for Kazuya to get a girlfriend, yet will only accept Chizuru to be that girlfriend, kinda rubs me the wrong way. It feels like she only has that opinion because it's the main couple in the show instead of, you know, how it fits for her character. A lot of these characters we're just at a weird stage at. We're supposed to hate Mommy, but we also don't really know the reason why she keeps on causing conflict to the other main characters. I wish they pushed her a little more at the overpass scene. Maybe Kasia should have popped out and that would have also shown us that he's getting a little bit more confident. But we wouldn't have a second season otherwise. There's a reason he mucked up the confession scene at the end. If I can complain about one more thing about Mommy, she didn't didn't really play much of a role during the middle part of the season. I actually thought they kind of forgot about her for about five episodes, and I feel like that kind of hampered her. The final thing about the characters is that I liked when Ruka and Mami let their opinions known about Shizuru and Kazuya's situation. Ruka especially because she's got a really valid argument. I mean, like she said, how far can this farce really go? It's probably the biggest problem I have with the relationship. The more they lie, the worse it's going to get and they keep telling us that they're going to end the fake relationship but every single time something happens and then the fake relationship keeps going on. What's worse is that Ruka gets called a pathological liar by Kazuya when in reality it's Kazuya who's been the real liar throughout the entire series. Why should Ruka get treated like that when she's absolutely correct? How's lying for an entire year helping anybody at this point? I've defended Kazuya for many things throughout this video, but even I was pissed at how unlikable he came across in that scene. So I have a few issues with the characters, but overall, I thought they were alright. But I hated the side characters. Minus Kibe, he's a saint. Or Mami using the Maya name when she rents Chizuru. It's a neat little reference and shows just how obsessed she is with that relationship. There are some more small things that are thrown in there, but I can't talk about all of them. I honestly can't lie when I say it's tough to choose a favorite from the main girls. I like them all, even mommy. The production in this show is really well done. The animation is very fluid and nice looking a lot of the time and it fits the vibe of the show pretty well. I actually liked the little text that would pop up every now and then. Just a small thing that makes the show feel a little bit different. Though, if I had to complain about one thing, TMS, Reiji, someone, please hear this. Please stop flashing images of one of the girls making out or mating with another man on my screen. I'm not trying to see the main character get cucked. Are you trying to make me not watch? Yeah, the whole cuckold thing is where my relatability with Kazuya ends. Seriously, dude, I mean, come on, have some self-respect. Where was I? Oh right, say what you want about Weiji's writing, but man is he a really good artist. There's a reason the girls all got popular. He was able to create designs that reflected their personality almost perfectly. My favorite being Mami's. Not due to her actual look, but how it reflects her character. Her bright and blue eyes make her appear like a cute happy girl, but that plays right into her manipulation. As in reality, she's a dark and cold character. And Shizuru is obviously seen as a well, mature, and therefore more beautiful and elegant. While Ruka is seen as more of a little sister type girl. Cause she looks like a little sister type girl. And then there's Sumi. I don't need to say much. I mean, look at her. She's adorable without even trying to be. The characters are each very vibrant and colorful, once again fitting for the show. And Weiji also nailed their clothes. Dude seems to know a fair bit about fashion. Imagine if Weiji paired himself with a really good romance writer and he only did the character designs. I feel like we would see his real strength. It's a pretty great cast all around, so I can't get to every you sadly, but I will talk about the ones I personally enjoyed the most. Shouts out to Shun Hori for, you know playing Kazuya. I hope he enjoyed himself playing Kazuya. Probably my favorite performance is Aoyuki as Mami. 
Her sarcastically positive tone is part of the reason I love her character as much as I do. It's just a really entertaining performance to me. And she nails it whenever Mommy goes completely cold. I also think it's really funny they got an actress like Rie Takahashi to essentially make anime girl noises for 90% of the time. She did fantastic though, but that's probably the easiest job of her life. Time to talk about the music. First, the OP. It's pretty catchy. The animation is very well done, and those little dancing scenes were really cute. I loved Sumi's. Like, what was she even doing here? What was this move? And why do I kinda love it? And the ending is enjoyable. I actually like it more than the opening due to its faster pace. It's got a really catchy melody to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's him shaking a coke bottle which is symbolic of him jerking off. The actual funny thing is that it looks like the girls are cheering him on. Wait, now he's... drowning in it? So would that mean he's drowning in his own semen? There's a part of me that's wondering if saying I like this series is a bad thing because I know how the manga turns out. I can't just be purposely obtuse. I guess I'm just hoping they skip a lot of the manga if it's really true that nothing happens for like a hundred chapters. The public opinion of Winter Girlfriend is so bad right now, but from what I saw in this first season, I enjoyed myself. I thought the drama was solidly built and at the very least really funny and the characters have the potential to grow. How long will that take? I mean, apparently it's still freaking going, but maybe the anime goes a different route. Who knows? Wait, Reiji made an incest manga? Hmm? Oh, of course. Damn you, Wei! Wake up, Mr. West, Mr. West, Mr. Fresh, Mr. By himself, he's so impressed. I mean, damn, did you even see the test? You got these, motherfucker, these. Rosie Perez, and yeah, it's barely passed. Any in every class, looking at every ass, cheated on every test. I guess this is my dissertation. Homie, this shit is basic. Welcome to graduation. Good morning. Can't you even lay low for two days in a row, you dumb dick?